You are listening to the oneofus.net podcast network. So we knew this time was coming, and this is going to be a big conversation because we got a lot to talk about here because these are the CW DC shows. Woo-hoo. We are going to yeah. talk about all four of them. Man, next year we're going to have to talk about five of them because they got Black Lightning about to join the, the pack. And I, I want to make a quick comment on that. A lot of fans upset that they've stated that it's not officially part of the Arrowverse. Well, they said that about Supergirl. They Super said Girl that head. about Supergirl. Yeah, yeah. It was on a different network. Eventually, it became part of the same universe, and eventually it became part of CW. If people remember, this Black Lightning was originally being shopped around, and Fox had dibs on this, yeah. which they declined to go forward with. So... And also, the show was supposed to be set in either Atlanta or New Orleans, and they've abruptly changed that to a fictional city. So that lends credence to the possibility of them maybe merging this to the I Arrowverse. I suspect to some degree they're just waiting to see how it's received exactly. before they decide to tie it into anything else. Um, for instance, you know the, the trailers we've seen for it? Yeah, they scrapped that entire thing. That right. whole first pilot they shot, they just got rid of it and are reshooting from the get-go. They're so, not planning to make that a part of the, the crossover either. Uh, not at this not point, at this but point. things yeah. could change. I wouldn't be surprised about three-quarters of the way through the next season of all these shows, suddenly we see Black Lightning show up. Yeah, the original script for Fox, I thought they already had the first three episodes in the can, so those probably don't work now that it... Not saying it will, but it, if yeah. it's going to be part of the Arrowverse, they probably need to make a lot of adjustments. By the way, that's Gene you hear talking. Gene is on our podcast, uh, Thumbtacks and is it thumb, screw thumb jobs. jobs and Screw Tax or Thumbtacks and Screw Jobs? Uh, watching Which WWE, is, it all feels the same uh, nowadays. I, I get confused. And you also write Smart Country for the site. Yes, sir. Yeah, you're the wrestling guy. I'm that guy. But you're also the superhero guy. Ah, jack of all trades. Yeah. And joining me is David Scott King, who, if any of you guys and listening are some of the people who used to go watch The Real Deal or come hang out with us, you know, that public access show me and Corey and Martin and Cargill and Tony were on so many, oh my God, so many years ago. 13 years ago. David was one of the guys who used to come hang out with us all the time, yep. except he had long hair then. Yeah. Now, long hair. now he's, he's all like, I feel smooth and beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Girls like skin for some reason. They do. So. They do. It's weird. Uh, we, and you also, as long as I've known you, we used, we, 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 used to call, we used to call you Star Wars Dave, right? Yeah, Star Wars Dave. Yeah, and now you're like comic book Dave. Uh, you know, I'm still Star Wars Dave. Yeah, Star and Wars will work. WWE fan for life. <laughs> Shoot me now, but yeah. I'll I'll still admit to it. I uh, I don't know what any of that is. Uh, I I don't know sometimes either. <laughs> I can't I I can't justify it in my own mind, but I it's it, it's been in my head since I was six years old. Same here. I'm hardwired to keep I, watching I float it as in and much out. as it pisses me off at times. Yeah, I float in and out. People come and go, and when the people that I like are hanging out, then I'm watching. Well, then you should listen to his podcast. Thumb Absolutely. Tax and Absolutely. Uh, all right, so let's jump right into the superhero shows with Arrow Season 5, the first of them. They called the Arrowverse, although funny enough, I can't remember which one it was. I watched one of, in one of these box sets, the uh, Comic Con panel, and some with the person who was hosting it referred to it as the the Flareverse, like Flash slash Arrow. It's like that's not that's the fetch of this Comic Con. I've also heard it called happen. the Berlanti that's not a verse. Thing. That's not, yeah, I've heard the Berlanti. Let's not get well. that caught on. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, even the like official wiki is is Arrowverse. the Arrowverse. And I was like, okay, it was first. It's sorry. It's the Arrowverse, yeah. and Arrow is up to season five. When we launch in here, we see Oliver Queen is still mayor, right? As we knew from a, it was a Judd Winnick's run in the comics, I believe, yes. that right. made yeah. him into decided to be the mayor. Highly underrated run. Uh, everybody has kind of gone their own ways. It really was, by the way, great run. Uh, Felicity goes, "Hey, bro, I'm not going to sleep with you anymore, but you should start a new team." And starting off with this guy who's been kind of irritating around, irritating you anyway, a vigilante called Wild Dog who just wears basically a hockey mask. He, I was like. 
So you don't get that you look like a uh, Hispanic Jason Voorhees? That's yeah. not... <laughs> I was going to say, like, is this guy like a Hispanic Casey Jones from the Ninja Turtle? Yeah, right? And the thing is, some people <laughs> were debating on whether that's an actual character or was it created just for the show. No, he no, was he an was, actual was an DC actor. character. Yeah, I actually like that actor. He was in, I want to say, Reaper. He was, and uh, the... Earliest thing I remember him in was uh, War of the Worlds, the Tom Cruise. Oh, one. good lord! Yeah, that was I remember, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, he was also in the first two seasons of The Strain. Yeah, I believe he was. Yeah, I boy, it was so Ooh. short time ago. I watched that and I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now our initial big bad, bad is a street level big bad, Tobias Church, who's like a big bad gangster who steps in. And he's like, well, I'm going to start gathering together resources. I'm good at being, I'm just a businessman. See, I'm a businessman. Gather all this stuff together, but he's really good at it and good at fucking with Oliver and rather quickly figures out who, that Oliver is in fact Green Era, which to be fair is not terribly hard to figure mm-hmm. out. At this point, <laughs> you know, really isn't. Uh, meanwhile, with the flashbacks, it's, it's the Russia year. As Oliver is dealing with, it becomes a member of the Russian mafia, the Bratva, in order to get, try and get close to Dolph Lundgren's character, who is a big bad. And the flashbacks. I enjoyed Lundgren so much in these flashbacks. And that's the, that was that was the really slow part for me. Not that I didn't. I mean, everything that Lundgren was involved in was exciting, and and you like hung on everything that he said and he did. But when it was just Oliver and uh, and the rest of the Bratva just going back and forth, I'm like, yeah, it went skip, in circles skip. a lot <laughs> with that. The it Bratva did. stuff. I I still as much as it did do that. Anything was a huge leap forward compared to last season's That's flashbacks. Yeah. I and I forgave the show for the flashbacks for the longest time, but season four, I hit my wall. I'm like, I'm done with these. But season fives felt a little bit fresh. It's a little fresher. You're right, and also they actually all pay off in the season itself in modern day, exactly. which is nice. I'm actually hoping that since it's been five seasons, maybe they can let go of the whole flashback idea. They've now. actually said that they're going to switch to flashbacks for other characters. Is yeah. What they're going to say. They so said, that, that might actually even be more interesting. Yeah, yeah, I believe Berlanti said it's such an ingrained part of the show now, it's yeah. going to feel awkward just nixing it. So yeah, the other characters will start, we'll figure out their backstories and how that would stuff we didn't know about them. If we could do that, if they could do that with, with Malcolm Merlin, or yeah, that would be great. That just I would love show... to know more about Malcolm Merlin. Yeah. Um, meanwhile, Oliver's team grows Artemis, who is a, a female villain character, but now she's like, well, maybe I don't want to be a villain. And Mister Terrific, who of course is the nerd Curtis, who worked for uh, what's his name, the Adam for, uh, uh, Ray, Ray Palmer, Palmer. Yeah, yeah, Ray Palmer's company, uh, who's figured out tech to be basically the JSA character, Mister Terrific. Although it takes him a while to get the name, yeah. and then the best of them, Ragman, appears, who I really, really like both as a character and on the show and then they before you know it he's like yeah i gotta go (laughs) i'm okay with is this gonna be no spoilers mild spoilers or full spoilers full spoilers yeah we're discussing the season for fans so we're considering buying the box sets okay in one of the episodes uh there's a nuclear device at an airport that the team is trying to disable and ragman not seeing any other options because felicity even her big brain can't deactivate the device he uh basically absorbs the yeah. device into his rags which are basically cursed uh well they were created by nuclear energy remember okay. because he was created in the nuclear explosion from the end of last okay. season which it was the whole thing when he finds out Felicity was like, well, we don't want to nuke like a huge major city, so we'll just nuke this small city okay. instead and exactly. redirect the missiles. Okay, I was yeah. getting mixed up with this comic book origin. <laughs> and uh, what I was okay with uh, him making the sacrifice, yet I, I'm glad he didn't die. L- someone losing their powers is not something we often see in these shows. And yeah. it, it can be tragic in its own way. And Unless you're Barry Allen. Yeah. Exactly. (laughs) Which seems to happen twice a season. That is true. But for this, I'm okay with it. We didn't lose him. He's coming back next season. He's going to come back. He's like, we'll be full time next season, which is great. I suspect the reason he was there for half season, because like, well, it's kind of expensive to animate you, dude. 
<laughs> oh, completely uh, understand. Arrow is the cheapest to produce of any of the Berlantiverse shows by a sizable margin. I think they're yeah. like, oh boy, our budget just went way up with this character. <laughs> they're kind of like, can we just stick to the street level guys or people whose powers don't have flashy shit? Exactly. <laughs> the same problem that Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. encountered with Ghost Rider this season. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean... I. Agents of Shield, I suspect, has a bigger budget than the CW shows do. Exactly. Because it's money. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. And it's filmed. Yeah. Uh, I mean, well, filmed it. Diggle was in a weird situation where he's like been falsely accused of like being involved with smuggling nuclear stuff, and he's in prison. But it's his, the general who framed him is is bad, and that has a whole weird subplot thing where he's for some reason of all characters hallucinating Deadshot giving him grief about having killed his brother. I was like, why Deadshot? Normally, military thrillers like this are t- completely my cup of tea. That is so what I want out of any sort of genre fiction, but it kind of fell flat for me. Yeah. All that Diggle stuff this season felt like they needed something for him to do, and it yeah. felt tacked on. Agreed. And it was really, they were just... It was something to get him out of the picture while everybody else did what they had to do until exactly. there was time to, to find an excuse to get him back in there. I think just so they didn't have two drill sergeants for the new heroes, maybe, with Ollie and Diggle. Meanwhile, with, with of course, uh, uh, what's his name, uh, Toby Bias Church being a street-level villain and mildly interesting, they get him out of the picture relatively quickly when they introduce a new uh, villain called Prometheus, who's in a mask, and he's an arrow-fighting guy, of course, and he's going around just murdering people. And, in fact, he gets out of, he frees Chance from police custody. Chance tells him, oh, by the way, Oliver is, uh, Oliver Queen is Arrow. And then he's thanks, and then kills. <laughs> You're like, wow, what a dick. Prometheus in the in the comics was uh, created by Grant Morrison during his JLA, JLA run, run. Mm. and he was designed to be the anti Batman. Uh, yeah, parents were killed by law enforcement officers. Yeah. He grew up hating the law, grew trained to yeah. be able to take down the man, so to speak. Right. And then then had some sort of hard drive uh, inserted into his brain where he could, kind of like Amazo, yeah. where he could replicate someone's fighting style just by watching them for so a certain amount of time. This is a wildly different interpretation yeah. of this yeah. character. It's kind of a dumbed down version. This is revealed, this is just like, this is the big twist of the season. Oh my god, it's that guy who, where did he come from anyway, yeah. who's suddenly well, we've Oliver's never seen right before. hand man. He's yeah, <laughs> I mean, who seems to always talk in a really crazy kind of voice. And the, the big twist with this is another character appeared this season, Vigilante, oh, who was... I used to yeah. love that fucking comic book. Yeah, when I did too. Character. It's and the best outfit. All the comic <laughs> fans that were watching the show were all excited, not only for Vigilante yeah. showing up, but because of District Attorney that was helping Oliver Queen during the course of this season... Adrian Chase, who in the comics is vigilante. Oh wow! Okay. So they so they pulled they pulled a comic TV. But clip. during yeah. the, a confrontation between vigilante and Prometheus, where vigilante, I, I don't remember if he fell to his death or. From what I remember, there was no body when Prometheus looked down. There was no body. There was no body. So vigilante escaped likely. Then Prometheus takes off the hood and is revealed to be. Adrian, Adrian Chase, Chase yeah. which okay, but uh, they the later thing. the voice of Prometheus before he took off the mask was Michael Dorn, right? Yeah, <laughs> it I'm was. Like, I remember kind of disappointed. It's I, like the whole David Prowse Darth Vader I, thing. I, I remember thinking, man, we're getting a lot of crazy voices of like the the yeah. best of the best dark voice guys on the CW verse. Yes. You know, you got Tony Todd yep. who was on was Flash, a, yeah, playing Black uh, the Black Flash, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then you have uh, oh god, Tobias Bell is uh, was voicing uh, Savitar. Savitar, and yeah. you're like Jesus Christ, man! They're just yeah. they, they're hiring all yeah. the best talent there is for that stuff. Yeah. Uh, if had Miguel Ferrer is gone, they probably would have found somebody probably, for him to do. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's some like I mean, obviously, all this builds up to finding out that. Uh, uh, Prometheus basically his dad was was one of the people Arrow killed early on when I'm killing people mission yeah, season and, one when he was just and then even after finding out his dad like thought he was like 
a psycho and was useless and was going to disown him is still like, well, fuck that. I'm still going to kill absolutely everybody. <laughs> and everybody ends up as you do back on the island. Uh, <laughs> like the whole, it's like a, it, this is like a, one of those Gilligan's Island movies. They may return to Gilligan's <laughs> Island with everybody back on the island. And the everything is exactly the way they left. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the whole island's ready to blow. And the one thing I'll say for sure, I mean, I actually liked the last quite a few, uh, like last five or six episodes of this. The only difference I saw was that they, they actually built a spa. Which was kind yeah, of cool. right, but you know we're all going. There's only one reason I really want you to go back to the island, and that's because we know that Death Deathstroke Stroke is, is there. there. And sure enough, not only do they bring Deathstroke back into the game, and they do it in a way where he completely forgives Oliver, and you're like, yeah, and they set you up. We're like, does he though? Yes, he does. Um, and then he doesn't. Well, and then he does. Then he and does. we didn't get we <laughs> didn't get Deathstroke for a while because yeah. of the whole unwritten. Once a character's film starts going right. into production, you can't use them on right. TV anymore. That's which, obviously not the case now. Exactly. Yeah, because they which Superman in itself is disappointing. Yeah. Um, but now apparently they've announced he's going to have a big part in the next season. So, exactly. which I'm super excited. I just say, fuck it, give him his own show. I <laughs> honestly, the t- I know they said. Once again, Titans is not going to be part of the Arrowverse, but they said that was Supergirl. Right. Yeah. If it does happen and TNT does allow it, hell, let him let Manu Bennett yeah. get a big. Sp- he deserves a shot on that show. Hell he deserves yeah. to be their season one big bad. Can exactly. I say a couple things I liked as well? I love. I'm a big fan of the Human Target. Oh yes, and I love that it. comic it was, was human- so underrated. Oh, yeah. And the show they did. The was show really was really good. Really good. Too. Uh, and I love yeah. they not the same actor, but they brought brought in Christopher Chance Human Target for an episode. That's a fun episode. It is. Ends up playing Oliver to fake his death. Obviously, I already mentioned I love the vigilante appearing in this. Although he's not exactly what I would have pictured, but you know, I'm happy he's part of. He was thing. kind of part Punisher, too, when you uh, think about yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. He's Completely. definitely, they're playing him as sort of like the early days of the Punisher, but yeah. in the DC universe, if you will. And I love that it ends with a Talia versus Nissal ghoul showdown, oh, which I'm the, like, oh, dude, I'm like, I've, I've hoped they've made porn of this for years. <laughs> <laughs> so now there were some things I didn't like. New Black Canary. You see, I actually liked New Black Canary. My only f- problem was they did almost nothing with her. I oh, I don't know if it was the writing or the fact that, honestly, this I may be in the minority with this. The actress just doesn't do it for me. Like she just it comes across as bland, I mean, generic cop. I was I would almost hope they had they would have put Artemis in a more primary position because I liked that actress. I yes, thought she was good, and I, I was excited agreed. they were. Although I hero. saw it for from a mile yeah, away, yeah. the twist coming. But I enjoyed that actress. I enjoyed Curtis. I enjoyed Ragman. New Black Canary just and see when I saw Black Canary, I'm like I I instantly thought, well, you know she she. She's not so so great as Black Canary, but she'd be an awesome Renee Montoya if they made her the question. Yeah, yeah exactly. that's what you were saying earlier. I, yeah. I don't disagree. And this being the, you know, the Arrow verse, anything is possible, quite frankly. And question they, they fits him- better on Arrow than any of the four shows. Yeah, yeah. agreed. Um, uh, I will say, I'm so sick of fucking Quentin. I wish they would just kill him off the goddamn show. I'm yeah. like, at first, I'm a drunk. Now I'm not a drunk. Now I'm a drunk. Now I'm not a drunk. He's like, oh, for fuck's sake, stop whining. That, plot device. They <laughs> felt like they were just... Twilling their thumbs with stuff for him, twilling their thumbs with stuff for Thea, Ollie's same sister. Same shit. It's always back and forth, the same yeah, angst. And over they, and over did again. they give a reason why she didn't do any of the action stuff this season? I was, I heard every rumor on Under the Sun, she was injured, she was pregnant. Well, I know story she, wise why they didn't. Yeah. I don't know the real, real reason. Uh, yeah. Typically, when stuff like that happens on shows There's with someone who's been doing action stuff for several seasons and just stops. It's typic- there's typically like a yeah. real reason for it. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I really had had enough of the whole extended Arrow family. I was The happiest moment oh. I had in the history of Arrow was when they killed off Laurel. I was like, God, I fucking hate Laurel. Honestly, <laughs> one that I hate more than anyone who returned again this season, Oliver's son, William. Yeah. He is the biggest plot device on any of the four Arrowverse shows. <laughs> he, you need to, to push Ollie to the brink, have him get kidnapped. It's true. And that's what they do. Although now at least they, they, I hate it when they take forever to do a reveal to a, a character like, oh, he's actually this. And they're like, let's just get it out of the way. Now he knows he's Arrow. And it's like, okay, that'll be less annoying now yeah. that he actually knows that. Um, yeah, I mean. Here's, here's, that's what, something that annoys me about the whole idea of William is that Oliver actually has a son. And it's Connor. And Connor Hawk, who actually ends up becoming 
Green Arrow after well, Ollie in dies. The com- in the so, comics. Yeah, in the comics. I, I think Fair enough. But. The issue is that the CW, they tend to cast young, and they tend to not want... having a Someone having a kid that's already teenager will age Ollie quite a bit. He doesn't have to be. He doesn't have to be that. I mean, you can still have that same age difference. You can do like the the Bruce Wayne Damien thing. I, they they keep pulling so many Batman out, uh, comparisons out of out, out of Oliver anyway. Oh, he look. was always just a Batman knockoff yeah. character anyway. So and this show really played a safe season one by the Nolan formula was used all throughout season sure. one, and it took them a long time to like get it out of their system. Yeah, it wasn't really till towards the end of season one that I really decided, you know what, I kind of like this show now. I was watching it out of stubbornness initially. I didn't, honestly, <laughs> I didn't start watching until season three, and then when when everybody kept saying to me, no, the, the Deathstroke stuff is, is where you gotta yeah. jump on. Yeah, season I two. I went back and Season and two is the best season. Yeah. And I, I would, honestly, season five, after season two, season five is my, my second favorite. Yeah, I probably agree with that. Um, season three I, is, for me, the worst. Worse. I know a lot of people feel season four. Four was the worst. Four really. saved the show for me, honestly. Like, Damien Dark was so charismatic that I... It's just season three was the... We're going to make this show as Batman as possible. The Ross Al Ghul they had was just not the dark, charismatic person with the cause that... Yeah. Uh, he, they made it more terrorist than... He, yeah. Nothing up clicked for me season three. What and Alicity. And that season like, three hit beat you over the head with Alicity so hard. I know you never liked Alicity. I liked Alicity. I, I was annoyed when they for this completely are you fucking kidding me, Felicity well, decides I'm not gonna marry you after all. I was like, that doesn't make any sense. Well this is me. <laughs> I it's the Sam and Diane thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, Seriously. for me, it's less that. It's more I don't like when the Girl Friday character hooks up with the lead because it always, every time it's done, it lessens the Girl Friday character. In the end, it's Pepper Potts in the yeah. Iron Man movies, the same thing. Lois Lane. Never should have hooked I mean, her up. Lois, I don't feel the same way. Honestly, I feel her and Clark, they make each other better at, at, in their relationship and married. But... I don't like Pepper Potts and Tony in a, as a thing, and I didn't like Ollie and... I've never Felicity. been a big fan of Pepper Potts and Tony myself. Mm. Um, Felicity, to me... I, was she in the comics before this? No. Well, yeah. yes, but not... This This is a completely different Felicity. I, I kind of dug it, but I almost thought, like, rather than have her... Like, because I really loved her character until the point she she turned on Ollie oh, for, yeah. for dumb reasons. I was like, it would have felt a lot more satisfying if you'd had her die tragically. There. True, but the finale... The I, there was I just funny story. I always used to joke about the Marvel universe, all the heroes being in the same city. It was like all it would take is one nuke, one villain drop, one nuke, and they're all taken out. It's true. I read an issue of Thunderbolts. This was from the early two thousands, from Fabian Icias's run. What does Hydra decide to do? They dropped a nuke right on that. It took like. Radioactive man, Miss Marvel, like eight different radiation manipulating heroes to be able to. Protect them from the blast. Yeah. Leon Yu was like, why doesn't someone just blow that shit up? And there and, you go. There and you there go. we go. It and happened. Finale. Does this mean we can we never have to go back to Leon Yu again? I the hope the so. island that everybody knows that nobody knows. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I know. A lot of people have been to this fucking island for it being a deserted desert island. It should know? be. They should desert make a resort island. there, man. Right? Like I said, the other side of the island is Gilligan. I'm telling you. No, that's where Diana. It's where the Amazons are. It's the same island. Uh, so finishing up, this is out on Blu-ray uh, or will be very, very shortly in September. This is the only one of these sets that hadn't come out yet. Uh, to, to press, so I was not able to watch the extras. But what there is, is there's, like all of these, they have the Comic-Con panel, which are usually pretty fun to watch. Um, they have an EPK on the new Team Arrow, looking at all the characters. There's an article. Each one of these also has a bit about the big crossover, the domination Dominators, thing, which we'll talk about yeah. at the end. of After we get through all these, we'll do a, a little thing, finishing up with the big crossover. There's a thing about Prometheus, there's the deleted scenes, and there's the gag reels. I hope Prometheus returns, even though it's highly unlikely, given his fate. But to see him fa- battle all the heroes combined... Yeah. See, like, evil Batman with plans on how to take down each mem- super-powered character? That would be impossible. I'd, I'd enjoy it as a crossover or even just a two-parter. Yeah, he was an interesting villain. 
I'll give you that. And he had some good plans. His whole thing with getting Artemis. I'm going to kill her unless you do this. <laughs> oh, fine, I like killing. Yeah, she's not real. I, she's yeah. fine. I'm not going to kill her. Great actress. You're an idiot. Great actress. <laughs> Uh, all right, so let's talk about The Flash Season 3. This is honestly <sighs> the first time that, uh, in the run of these shows that The Flash is not my favorite season of the A group, Same here. Um, matter, matter of fact, I'll, I'll say it. This was my least favorite of the four shows this year. And yeah. Flash is typically favorite or tied as my favorite. And yeah. this... Ne- the 20 plus episode seasons hurts Flash more than any of the oh, shows. agreed. There's so much... Like, I mean, there's you feel like... If you want to do that... Do this plot stuff in the beginning, then the whole middle should just be fun one-offs with, like, other characters. And season with, like, one other was so good about that. Yeah. Like, they didn't take eight episodes to form team yeah. Berlanti plot gimmicky not, thing. It, it not, to one sa- episode. not to sound like it's a joke, but honestly, I, I felt a lot of the season was running in circles. Yes. <laughs> So to speak. And, you know, the whole show feels like it is because, seriously, it's a, a speedster again. again. Like, and they've, like, that's been such a strong reaction he, that Flash has Berlanti has come out. They've had the, yeah. all of Berlanti these has come out and said, no more speedsters, we swear. Yeah. <laughs> the next well, season we never the even thing. got, I was hoping to see, like, the Flash rogues all united for one season as the big bad. Yeah. We'll see that eventually. Well, I mean, you can't. Okay, well, so half think, of them think about baby think about, faces you, now. You can't do yeah. the trickster because Mark Hamill's busy. You can't do yeah. Mark Captain, Hamill's not that busy. Captain Cold <laughs> and Heatwave are so uh, integrated into, into Legends, Legends of Tomorrow that they're gone. Yeah. And now uh, Captain Boomerang is uh, on the on, NU. Uh, so uh, presumably yeah, he's dead. On NU, possibly dead. Um, although Mirror Master, so pleased they introduced this character. He's one of my favorite villains with the dumbest name. And I, his powers are so cool when they're done right. And I thought overall they did a pretty good job with him here. I, I, I've never been crazy about the top. Who, let's face it, is just a a knockoff of of, of Count Vertigo. But you know, I, I've had I enough of Grodd. I like yeah, both yeah. characters, but the act both the actor and actress play they do nothing for me. I, I, like I feel actor. like they have no chemistry together. I, if they were going to really play him as a charming rogue, and I thought the guy did just fine but they could have cast so much better than him for that they're like yeah let's you want this this they even talk, depending on which watching, mirror master we're yeah watching the bonus features for this they're talking about like describing him describing him like that like that's what we want to do we realize that this is a really important character and we wanted to make sure we did a really good job and i'm like then you should have tried a little bit harder because like if you had gotten like you know a character actor we got a little bit of name more name recognition who's great at playing these type of characters i would have been like yeah make him really likable because this guy's just like, okay, I get you're trying to make him likable, but it's not totally selling. But they have, so they do some good stuff with their their miniature little Mirror Master. No, I forget which Mirror Master was this. Was this the original? Uh, I doesn't matter. I, I, I'm yeah. thinking it was the original who the 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 current version that we all have now. I would love to see, but I'm sure some of his habits we won't we won't see if on remember, CW. He was a pretty hard cocaine if I remember hearing correctly I thought they said Mirror Master and next season they're going to do some scary stuff with which okay. Mirror Master's always had that capacity for being a frightening character as well very much so um, but the plot I think the biggest disappointment is right in the beginning because although I wasn't crazy about Flashpoint in the comics it was okay I loved the animated movie. I thought that took just the good parts and got rid of Agreed. all the bullshit Agreed. Agreed. and made it a great animated film. So I'm like, yeah, I love Flashpoint. And when they announced this was going to be the Flashpoint season, I was like, perfect. Because things are already starting to feel a little like you're running in, as you said, running in, in circles. circles yeah. It's time for something new. I and was, they do it for 20 seconds. <laughs> I was hoping we would, we know we're not going to see Thomas Wayne as yeah. Batman. But we're not seeing gonna, maybe we're not going to see the Atlantis versus the Amazon. Amazons, but yeah. seeing maybe like Robert Queen yeah. as Green Arrow, something. So yeah, exactly. It was like it felt so arbitrary. The whole thing. You're like, so the differences are so minor. Like you're like, okay, so he goes back and he saves his mom. So now his mom and dad are alive, and now like Wally is the Flash. And uh, there's the, one of the dumbest costume Kid characters Flash. yet we've oh. seen yet here on uh, the rival. Who's oh his yeah, nemesis, who, that like, costume did not translate to live action. Funhouse mirror world. version of Professor Zoom. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Um, and Cisco is an asshole billionaire tech magnate. Caitlin is just a doctor. Um, uh, and Barry's starting to lose his memories of the timeline, and the whole thing is like it's so over so quick. He's like, oh shit. 
Wally got injured. I need to go back and time change the timeline again. He's like, man, seriously, dude, you're like bipolar or something. You're just it was, it was almost like they they wanted an excuse to call it Flashpoint. Well, yeah, and they act like the whole season is Flashpoint because a couple small things changed after he came back, and you're like, okay, not even like things like. Oh, now Diggle has a different gender baby. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, I, honestly, Flash is also the most guilty of this as far as doing something crazy for the season finale and then by the second episode of the next season, undone. It, it's every, it should have been the whole done. fucking yeah. season. Agreed. Or at course. least till mid season break. Yeah, it was just a massive disappointment. It was like an episode and a half of like Flashpoint. Pretty and then much. it's like, oh, back to the regular world. Where then there's yet new excuses for everybody to be mad at everybody about stuff with the whole, oh, one of the timeline differences is Iris is now mad at Joe about, oh, fucking something. Who cares? No <laughs> not one talking cares. To and coffee Cisco's, on or something. Cisco <laughs> is angry at Barry both because he changed timelines and because he won't change the timeline again to save his, his brother. brother. And you're like, what? Get it straight. Um, and then the whole, which I thought was a, is a funny r- gag, and they're doing it again next season as they keep getting a new Harry every season. Yes. And, and HR, <laughs> who's a really annoying character, but then he grows on you after a while, I thought, was like, okay, that that's a funny bit. Uh, and I love that he and Cisco hate each other because you kind of hate him too. Yeah. And Tom first. Cavanaugh is so good at playing oh, each yeah. of these different yeah. versions of uh, well. He's kind of the standout guy on the show he in is. a lot of ways, he I is. think. Um yeah, uh, and they, I like Caitlin's transfer, like becoming Killer Sn- Frost, Killer but it Frost. happened so, it took so long, and it was so like, we know she's going to turn into Killer Frost, just get it over with already. <laughs> yeah, but that's just it. Once it happens and she goes all the way, where do you go from there? No, I mean. Yeah, and no, it's true, and obviously they don't want to write her off the show. And then that she, also, then you also got to realize that that ups the budget, because yeah. they got to yeah. keep using Oh, her. yeah, speaking of budget, <laughs> though, when she went full Killer Frost yeah. for those two episodes, we were seeing that was like better X-Men. effects than Iceman in the X Men yeah, movie. It was like yeah. X Men level. <laughs> but yeah. the thing is that you can't keep that up on a CW budget. My question was, how did she learn how to do that stuff so fast when she just got her powers this season? She just kind of feels it, baby. <laughs> I'm guessing so. <laughs> uh, and meanwhile, of course, Doctor Alchemy is a new character who turns out to be a hypnotized Tom Felton. I will say, I mean, Doctor Alchemy is just kind of a killing time till we get around to introducing Savitar type character. Pretty much, uh, that is yet more like, oh, here's more Fallout from Flashpoint. He's turning characters in the real, re- regular universe into, into the, the people they would have been in, yeah. in Flashpoint, on a different Earth, the villains, yeah. yeah, on the different Earth, starting with the rival. Um, and that creates yet more angst because Wally's like, hey, how come Jesse got superpowers and I didn't get them? We were in the same fucking Dark Matter explosion last season. And he's like, uh, Dr. Alchemy's like, come here, WB son. Likes I got women more than they're like minority. <laughs> Alchemy's like, come here, son. I got a deal for you. Let's talk. <laughs> Try this. <laughs> but I, I at first really hated Tom Felton on the show when he's just the aggravating, constant asshole. But because then, everybody recognizes him as Malfoy, so he's got to yeah. be that same recognizable character. But then they did the thing that surprised me the most. First they would go, oh, he's the villain, which you expect. But then they go, wait, he doesn't know he's the villain. He feels terrible about it. And now he feels terrible about treating everybody like shit and really wants to be a better person. Which and that I did not for me. see coming. Yeah. I was like, wow, I really like him once he's on Team Flash. The, and that, now he's on again. They, <laughs> they yeah, made wow. the dive over... Cliche Gorge. They really, yeah, they just right past jumped it. right over. It made you think they were falling into it, and then they were like, "Nope, we nope, were just we made it." Past that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I do like Jesse Quick. I hope they have more of her. Yes, I, I, although I, I'm such a huge fan of her from the comics, and her and our man eventually hook up. So I yeah, hoping- but he's dead now. Oh well, no that the one that or at least that the, died nineteen forties one is dead. Yeah, that was uh, Rick Tyler, the original. Yes. Um, no, no, no. Was it Rex Tyler? Rex, Rex. That was, okay. Yeah. Rick is the the He's one. The son. For, yeah, or grandson. grandson I guess yes. it would have to be grandson now. But once again, all the Savitar shit is giant. Like him turning out to be Evil Barry, which I'm sorry, I don't buy at all. So he became Savitar because he was a little depressed and bored. Yeah, I'm not. I'm sorry. They're like, I'm a time remnant. Which, first off, shouldn't Black Flash have been chasing him if he was a time remnant? Agreed. Which um, is the whole plot of, of this Legend season of, of Legends of Tomorrow. Yeah, he shouldn't be just have that much time to kill to eventually become evil. If they know? said the suit 
that he he created protects him or masks him from the um, Black Flash's presence, yeah. I would be okay with but that. They never bother. They never him. even bother. And, and, and once again, explain. just the idea that this Barry Allen could ever become that guy. I mean, I'm so yeah. You saw Iris die. I get it. That's traumatic. I still don't buy for a second you would turn into Savitar. It's just completely unconvincing and just feels like we got to have another speedster villain. And now we'll pull the oldest trick in the book on time travel type shows. It's <laughs> you. <laughs> it's Flash with Man t- versus himself. With a twist. Yeah, with a twist. Just not crazy about that whatsoever. In fact, it drags on forever. It gets so convoluted, too, between that and, and the, Al- the Dr. Alchemy, like Felton being able to channel Savitar, you know, so they yeah. can speak to Savitar. And there was so much Back filler. In, who's in this so trapped... Why is there a prison in this Then with force? Vibin, Vibin and Gypsy, that was like a, another small... I liked Vibin and Gypsy. Though. No, that was a good thing, but yeah. they didn't they didn't do we, anything with yeah. it. They, I, it's just great watching them flirt. I was like very satisfied. And given as much as many filler episodes, we could have got one episode just with them, and it would have worked. And I, w- I would have been more happy with that than what we, some of the stuff we got. Yeah. Now the two parter in Gorilla City, I was saying, visual effects wise, I was expecting it to look a little bit better, but given that there given was the, the invasion episode, yeah. probably ate up a bunch of the budget. Yeah. Very true. And then they had that musical they had to contend with. <laughs> Which, I'm like, it's okay. I, I'm the guy who usually likes musical episodes of genre shows, and this is probably the weakest one I've seen of any Yeah, of it wasn't horrible, it just didn't, it doesn't stick with Which you. Which kind of surprised by, because one of the songs was written by the guy who composed the music for La La Land. One of the songs was composed by uh, the woman, the lead character and the main uh, songwriter for My Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, which wow. has great songs on it. Does. it. Uh, and I was like, wow, how is this not better? And you have good performers. Some of them actually have music musical backgrounds. Sure, most right. of them do. That, yeah. was, that was literally the genesis behind them doing a musical episode. Yeah, They're uh, like, hey, we've got these people who are on Glee. Yeah, and Melissa was, Benoist yeah. and, and Grant Gustin were both, yeah, on, both Glee. on Glee. And then the guy they got to play the villain, Music Maestro, was on Glee. And was, well. was it, and then um, Joe was like a jazz singer. He had a recording contract yeah, at yeah. one point. And Professor career. Martin Stein, uh, Victor Garber, wasn't he on yeah. Glee as well as what's his name's dad? Was he? I just, I yeah. always, to me, he's always going to be the dad from Alias. Alias, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I know no. he's trying to fight it. You're always going to be Jennifer Although he's Garber's now, Mar- he's found his de- definitive character. Yeah. He is Martin Stein, yes. like ripped from the comics. Uh, yeah, I, at the end, this just got too convoluted. It's so back and forth. For some reason, there's a prison that can't be empty in the Speed Force. I don't know what the fuck that plot device is. So they're like popping people in and out of it. The <laughs> moment that that happened, I knew end of the season. Okay, they're not going to leave uh, Jay Garrick in here. Okay, they're not going to leave Wally in here. Barry's yeah. going to sacrifice himself as penance for Which, Flash for effing up the timeline. And time they're already line. saying like, oh, when the new season starts, it's going to be the team figuring out how to continue to be Team Flash without him there anymore. I'm like, that'll last for one episode, once again. You know? whole, oh, you're four. giving him a whole episode? I give, a whole <laughs> episode. Yeah, I give it half an episode. I yeah. give it the first 15 minutes. That's the thing about it. It was like, it's so... We know that's not going to last. There's no as he walks off with like the god character of the Speed Force into the. He's going to come. Force. Barry's going to come back and he's going to have a different outfit and he's going to like yeah. look how Flash does in Mortal Kombat. Yeah. So, yeah. I, mean, yeah. I honestly, this show, I'm glad it's the most family friendly and the the we get a superhero show kids can watch, but you can you can do that without having no balls and this show is feeling like it has no balls it's it it doesn't even pretend like it's going to take a big risk at for all me, for me flash and supergirl are the kitty shows they're the ones that that the kids can sit around and watch and, and yet into. i agree but supergirl stepped it up this year it did. for me and we'll get to that in a second yeah uh, the bonus features here with this Blu-ray release, you've got, once again, the Comic-Con panel where they convince Grant Gustin and Joe, I forget the actor's name, to come out and tap dance contest in front of the crowd with each other, like a, which is a, kind of a funny bet. So they, they yeah. soft shoe, if it will, because they don't have <laughs> tap shoes on. Uh, um, Jesse Martin, sorry. Yeah. Uh, there is a look, uh, a 20-minute doc on how time travel works and how it works in the Flash universe and how realistic that would be, which is actually pretty cool. I love it when they do stuff like that, like how it, the science of type things. So uh, that's I, how they explain their, their mistakes? Or <laughs> explain how the legends... This is where we effed right. up. How, or explain how the legends of tomorrow don't come in and stop it. Right. 
I love how they have the nerve, the legends, to bitch at Barry <laughs> for changing the timeline of, like, the sheer gall. You kill random henchmen <laughs> left and right. Who knows what butterfly effects you're causing. Uh, there's a special about the rogues here. Uh, there's a, a yet another part, of course, the invasion uh, storyline crossover. There's a thing about Gorilla City. Uh, there's a bunch of pieces about the musical episode, because apparently they were super proud of that. So there's a whole bunch of, like, every detail. Overhyped. Yeah, I agree that too. <laughs> Uh, there's a conversation with Andrew uh, Kreisberg, who's the showrunner for Supergirl, I believe, and Kevin Smith. And that's on uh, the Su- Supergirl, I believe. has He directed one, one yes. episode of each, yeah. I believe. So, and he's uh, also directing one of each this which season, of, too. Which, of course, as it always is, I'm not the, I'm not a fan of Kevin Smith as a filmmaker, but he's a pretty good TV maker. And let's face it, he's always fun to hear talk. And he's very amusing in these little stuff. I've always... And him on superhero fiction, I'm okay with. Yeah. I've enjoyed, like... His Daredevil run was pretty solid. His Green Arrow run, pretty solid. You yeah. know, yeah. Overall, I agree with you. His comic and I have I have yet to hear anybody write more realistic comic book dialogue. I mean, his, his the way that he phrases the way it's almost Tarantino like in how natural the conversations hmm. are. I've never seen any. Not not one of of the. He's episodes. the best springboard yes. uh, as far as like whoever comes in after him. He, he sets the table perfectly. Yeah. He did it for Brad Meltzer on Green Arrow. That's and true. Meltzer had probably the best run of like the last 15 years. That's true. And well. he set the table for Bendis, who probably the best Daredevil run yes. of the modern era, if not of all time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Brubaker's comes really close. Yeah, I, people get mad when I say he possibly tops Miller. No, and I'm a no. huge Miller I, mark. I think, I think Miller created more memorable characters and more things that would like be have bigger impact over time, but in terms of just writing, sorry, Brian's character run Miller's run rough, I so reread not too long ago. It a lot of yeah, things I felt rushed yeah. and Electra, it, it, everything Electra wise just felt rushed. I mean, to any me. comic you're going to read in the '80s, with the exception of maybe stuff by Alan Moore, is going to feel old. Is going to feel dated comic book yeah. writing to some degree, I, and and whereas Bendis is felt very modern. I, I think that doesn't bother me so much as like. I'm okay with writing done in ones, but it seemed like so many comics from that era were done in ones. They didn't let stories breathe. It's true, uh, but you know, of that era, Miller's uh, uh, version of Daredevil is one of the best. Yes. Agreed. 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 Yeah. Uh, but there's deleted scenes. There's a gag reel, which unfortunately spends way too much time focused on musical type stuff. Oh. Where like, but look, they're all acting like they're dancing. Okay, whatever. They really thought this musical was going to take off. They really, <laughs> they were really proud of the musical thing. This uh, is not one more time with feeling. It, it, it's not once more with feeling. Which is not even <laughs> smile time. <laughs> it's not even oh. smile time. Uh, all right, so next up is Legends of Tomorrow season two, which unbelievably Woo-hoo. pulled a turnaround. I did such not, a turnaround. Never would have seen it coming because that first season getting thought, rid of Hawkman and Hawk Girl. That first season was kind of fucking dismal. I thought, and I and those are two of my favorite characters. I know in the comics they, because they, they were, got such bad actors. To yeah, be. I'm sorry, the uh, Kendra, I, the actress that played her. I was okay with. She's okay. She's okay. But the, the actor, what was the actor's name forget, that played was the, Carter Hall? He, he was, was a boy. Manila envelope glued to a beige wall. <laughs> he was walking, talking, ambient. I don't. Oh, but, dude. <laughs> this show, the this season, the writing's just better. The characters are better. Introducing the uh, villains were giving given more to do because I don't blame Vandal Savage, yeah. the actor playing him. He was fine. He was just not giving given much. Well, of the anything. villains are so much more fun here. First off, they're villains we already know. You've right. got Eobard Thawne, the Reverse Flash. You've got Damian Dark from uh, Arrow, right? season four of uh, Arrow, season four of Arrow, and then you have and, Vandal Savage. And you have, uh, well, oh, no, no, this um, no, 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 Malcolm Merlin from Merlin. season one. Yeah, so of Arrow. they become the Legion of Doom as, <laughs> as they make a joke about. It. I think it's uh, Nate Haywood who's b- become. Citizen Kane is one of the new legends. Citizen Steel. Uh, Citizen Steel, oh, sorry. sorry. What did I say? Citizen Kane? Yeah. Yeah, that would be real. Rosebud. <laughs> um, <laughs> now that's a, it would have been a, a, a Freudian slip. <laughs> um, he makes a joke about him. And I like this character a lot. He's like a historian and he's super ex- geeky about all the super stuff because his grandfather was Commander Steel in the yeah. original JSA. And heroes that actually want to be heroes it's yeah. it, you wouldn't think it would be so refreshing, but this day and age, it, it is. And as well, Vixen, I think is great. I really like the actress playing her. I really always liked that character. I like the actress. This is technically um, the grandmother of the Vixen we know yeah. from current. Who's day. actually on the, who actually has a Arrowverse show that exists right now. The animated, that, yeah, the uh, animated Vixen, which is had some characters in the Arrowverse. They're they're. 
the, the show up as voice actors as their characters yes. on Vixen. I haven't watched it. Although I've seen there there have been little YouTube clips online. Yeah, yeah. I, I've watched the um, second season just uh, finished not too long ago. Watched that. It's really entertaining. Although I honestly like the actress playing her grandmother, the one on Legends, way more than the actress that plays the current era Vixen. Right. Okay. Um, but yeah, I like her, and I love the this season uses the excuse of like, well, we went and hooked up the 1940s JSA, we fought Nazis, which is always a good thing to happen in any time travel show for sure. Woo-hoo. Gotta fight Nazis at some point, right? Yes, they're, they're there to be punched. They're their there. Job. They exist <laughs> to be stomped out by freedom and liberty and all good things. Uh, you know, we get to see like like we did the end of last season, Our Man. We get yeah. to see Doctor Midnight. You know, I mean, I was like so oh, excited. Doctor Midnight, we I didn't get as much of him. As I want it, or well, we got a little bit of Star Girl, which a little bit, I was yeah. kind of it threw me when, off because when you get to the King Arthur episode where she's a, she basically is the origin of Merlin as a character in <laughs> King Arthur times, I'm like that's hysterical. Well, uh, the thing <laughs> well, is, do you not approve? You're shaking your head. No, it's just I, I'm like, uh, oh yeah, that happened too. Yeah, the whole season for me just George Lucas. Yeah. Oh, the George that Lucas episode. Needed. That was the whole. Can we talk about the George Lucas episode? Yeah, they go back. I love the idea because both Ray is a total dork and uh, uh, what's his name, Nate is a total dork. Yep. And we have found out along the way, Nate only became a historian because of Indiana Jones, and, and that Ray, Ray only got the science became the Adam Star Wars. Star Wars. Yeah. And so when they accidentally throw, scare off George Lucas from being a filmmaker. They stop remembering how to do what they're good at, <laughs> and so they've got to go back in time and convince George Lucas to be a filmmaker. And it's filled with so many great like Star moments Avengers, where they're yeah. like, "I gotta say it, I gotta say it," and they do the same thing. With this episode with J.R. Tolkien, yep. where yeah. like, of course, Ray cannot help himself, but like, and and Nate, but like, do things that like. Look, yeah, it's a powerful ring. And yeah, stuff and like then, that. This show found they get trapped its vo- in the tra- yeah. in the trash. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this show found its voice this season. It it found its voice. It the found humor, its sense of humor, exactly, which was sorely needed. The only and, thing they had last season was stuff between. Um, uh, Captain Cold and uh, Heat, uh, Wave. Heat Wave. It was really the only funny parts. Everybody else was so fucking serious. They tried to make Ray funny, but he was so stuck out like a sore thumb because he had no one to play, to play off, off of. Right? Exactly. And now with Nate, he's got he someone does. to play off. And it's. I think this season it it has its purpose and it stands out from being just a. Some people call it a Doctor Who ripoff season one. This is its own thing Dude, now. I, and episodes like the, like the Tolkien episode and the Lucas if episode. They, if they make next yeah. season, if they make next season, like every episode is that is that well thought out and that full of and that jokes, memorable. Then that for me would make the best the best show out of the entire Dude, lineup. Zombies during the Civil War. I was like, yes, please. That's a great that, thing to bring yeah, but together. See, now, you're, now you're talking like Transformers, The Last Night kind of territory. Yeah, but that was a bad movie. Oh, didn't matter yeah. the fact that you, you kind of that could have been cool stuff and, like that happening, but it wasn't in that movie because Michael Bay. <laughs> and we got Jonah Hex back this season. Jo- well, which I yep. expect will be back every season. Now. But uh, I wouldn't we, be surprised if they eventually put him on the Wave Rider. Exactly, and he character. was he wasn't given much to do season in his appearance season one. Right, he was so much better this time, and, and he he's, got to confront his arch nemesis Quentin, Quentin Turnbull. Turnbull. Yeah, finally. played by um, formerly Frank Lapidus of Lost. Oh, uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I didn't know if I liked him at first because I thought, all right, this guy is a little too charismatic of an actor to play Turnbull. I, I take it back. He was perfect. The, you know, the, the only things that I have had any take back at all, and I think they were just there because they were c- kind of going with, like, the Raiders joke, was that they were ser- everyone searching for the Spear of Destiny, which was like, okay, they're basically just nodding at Raiders of the Lost Ark there. With the but they've, all, they've also done that, you know. that arc in uh, Justice League Animated Series. Oh, have they? Okay. Yeah, that was like the – that was – Lex Luthor's end to the Legion of Doom. He had yeah. to he had to go to Black Hawk Island to retrieve it for Grodd. That, yeah. that and the whole back and forth with Rip, who I actually thought the season functioned so much better largely without him. I'm Agreed. like, yeah, him not being the captain makes this formula work much better. First off, because I think White Canary is fantastic. I think she she's is maybe the strongest actress next to Martin on the show. Victor uh, Victor Garber, Victor. yeah, agree. Uh, I think she's terrific and. Whew, <laughs> oh dear Just, God! From the uh, moment she got Sarah Lance got recasted 
And I, I, I wasn't a fan of her getting recasted so soon. Yeah. Uh, season two, and then I saw who they got. I'm like, okay. She, I'm she, okay with this. She's such a better leader like, than, than Katie Rip Lotz is, is perfect. Just, who Rip also no, never stops reminding you of how much they wish this was like Doctor Who or would become the American Doctor Who, which is, you know, I'm... I think the show continues in the second season as well. It still really wants to be the American Doctor Who. It just forgot how to be funny or clever the first season. And now it's doing all the stuff a good season of Doctor exactly. Who does. Memorable historical characters. The like, twist. The, don't forget the twist. The fourth member of the Legion of Doom. Oh. Um, uh, a time-displaced Captain Cold who right. died at the end of season one. Right. Um, yeah. Who they even uh, they brought into a Flash episode as well. Remember? Because yeah. he's like, oh, yeah. I need a criminal. Yeah. Yeah, actually, that's one of my favorite episodes of that season because he's like, yeah. ah, one of the ah. only good ones. He's like Edward G. Robinson with the way he plays that. Uh, I lo- ah, Wentworth ah, Miller ah. to me is just perfect as Captain Cold. His ca- Cold, I can put it up against some sure. actual big budget film villains. He's one of the most memorable, and it's got it's that that and his portrayal of the character in itself has got to be a testament to to how well he's done when they actually flip the comic version into how he's played on the show, and that ha- and DC typically doesn't do that. That no. Marvel does la- that at the drop of a hat. The when- last time I I remember that happening was when they actually did uh did that with bringing Harley Quinn into the into the regular continuity. Hell, when yeah. the Dark Knight was coming out, uh, they didn't bring Bruce back from the dead who was Batman was dead at the time right DC rarely does that this was one of their few exceptions I'm fine with it yeah me too um, also I forgot to bring out the King Arthur one I love that Sarah totally hooks up with Guinevere oh. like, sweet <laughs> and, <laughs> where are those deleted and I love right? how Ray Palmer has become the person to walk in the room right when the hero's about to kiss the girl he does it again here yeah. but as he's walking out the room he tells Sarah you're the hero, right? <laughs> Go kiss the damsel. Right? Oh, yeah. And Vixen gets a pet T-Rex. Oh. <laughs> you know, and I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. Big that. ideas. This show should be the most knucking futs of all four of the Arrowverse yeah. shows. Rip makes out with a humanized version of the ship's computer, Gideon. <laughs> You're like, which totally echoes the Doctor Who episode, though, where they it did completely pretty does. much the same thing with the, with the TARDIS. TARDIS, yeah. Um, but there's just lots of fun and surprises throughout this season. Lots of big laughs. I mean, there's a little bit of, like, angstiness. Like, there's the whole uh, thing with uh, Martin accidentally creating a daughter by changing the timeline and then feeling all angsty about it. What should I do? I don't, I don't want to lose her. And if I tell anyone she's an aberration, they'll want to change Darian just back. show up and say, oh, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we can work with that. I, I've been there, dude. It could have been a lot You're worse. You're so last season. <laughs> it could have been so much worse. It's not a firestorm point. And then there's a totally solid finale. I thought this all built up to a very satisfying, the legends from the past meet the legends from where the show's up to. And they the were not supposed Doom. to meet. Yeah, versus 500 reverse, reverse flashes. flashes. And I got to say, Hey, Matt Leisher, I was not... When Reverse Flash, we all know the plot to a season one, Harrison Wells. Uh, it was Eobard Thawne who changed his identity to take on the, at the time, dead Harrison Wells. Tom Cavanaugh, so charismatic as Reverse Flash. I wasn't feeling Matt Fleischer seasons one or two of The Flash. Yet, what a difference writing, better writing can make. Loved him. Even episodes that didn't have... Uh, Merlin or uh, Dark to play off of. He was great. Yeah, he was so much written, so much better here. And I love the 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 the, uh, the Doom. What is it? Legion of Doom. Legion of Keeps Doom. turning on each other throughout this whole thing. They're constantly plotting against each other, and then they're like, "Okay, fine, we won't do that again." Yeah. Well, I was like, "Why are you plotting against me? Because you're such a dick." <laughs> that was like actual line. <laughs> pretty much. Um, yeah, I had fun, and I love the ending with, like, everything's fine now, let's go back to present day, and it's, like, giant mishmash world. Yeah, you know? which they told us, they've hinted at it since the beginning of season one, where they can't meet up with other time displaced versions of themselves, or, or they will cause some serious havoc in the time stream. Which they did. There's T-Rexes running around, like, whatever city they're in, I don't even know, Central City. Yeah, they city went back to Central City. Uh, yeah. Something like that. Uh, anyway, so, yeah, a lot of fun. Highly recommend this uh, this season a lot. They Possibly go- my favorite of 
I don't know. Between this and Arrow are tied as my favorite so far. Uh, I'm between this and Supergirl because I thought Supergirl season two was totally Supergirl solid. also vastly improved. Yes. Well, I loved season one myself. I really did. I had my issues with season but, one. I didn't hate it. But season two does like one of my favorite scenes in any... Well, we'll get to it in a second. Anyway, yeah. uh, so with this Allegiance set, you've got deleted scenes. You've got another thing about the invasion for the Dominators. Uh, you've got the Comic-Con yeah. panel... Uh, and a gag reel. It's really not a lot on this, to be sure, but it's also a shorter show than the others by like yeah, four or five episodes. I believe episodes. 18 episodes versus 23, 23 yeah, for the others. Exactly. All right, so let's move on to our last show, which is indeed Supergirl Season 2. Two. With right off the bat, we saw at the end of the last season, Supergirl finds another Kryptonian-style pod, opens it up, and goes, <gasps> and we didn't see what it was. Well, what it was is Mon-El, who is a Daxamite. Who's a Daxamite, who turns out to be like like bitch like enemies with with the kryptonites like they're like in a cold war or something and kryptonians yeah Yeah. (laughs) kryptonians and they got take their planet largely got like decimated when krypton exploded because they're like right next door yeah yeah so that kind of sucked for them um but yeah he escaped that planet and he's kind of a douchebag at first i mean the guy's doing everything but wearing a fitbit um, but he's like, <laughs> sorry to any of our fans who like that. <laughs> Just they irritate me. It would have worse. You could have imagined a Starbucks. <laughs> right. True. <laughs> but he's like kind of the love interest this season. You know, the off and on love interest for Supergirl, which is fine. I mean, yeah. like he's, he the, was, after playing him is kind of douchey, but he's supposed to be douchey. So. Yeah. He's supposed to be douchey. The thing is, I didn't buy his douchiness. I, I, it felt, it felt forced. He's a decent enough actor. Um, I, I don't know. I don't want to say he was bland. It felt, it just felt like I didn't buy when he was playing the douche. He reminded me of, uh, Christian Bale trying to do the goofy Bruce Wayne. Yes. Doing a very crappy job at it. That, wow, you nailed it. (laughs) You know, he was, he's, he's playing it kind of goofy. I like, by the end, I thought I really liked him. Yeah, he, he grows on you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, one of the several big bads this season is Project Cadmus. No big surprise coming into a bigger place in this being run by Lena Luther's evil, uh, stepmother. You know, Lillian as you do. Huh? Who is Lillian, uh, Lillian, Lillian who is Lex's uh, birth mother. Yeah, who's Lex's birth mo- mother. And her whole thing is, aliens are bad. We need to get rid of all the aliens and get them out of here. And well, along the way, she creates Metallo out of uh, uh, using kryptonite as his power source. Metallo, yeah. obviously, obviously a major superverse Superman. villain. Yeah, and I didn't think we were going to get as many big-name Superman villains this season as we got. That is very true, and just characters in general. Uh, then, of course, we also get McGann Moores, who pre- initially says, oh, I'm another green uh, Martian. And then she's like, nope. well, actually, I'm... <laughs> they followed the comic story <laughs> yeah. pretty much I'm, to a team. I'm the Nazi Martians who, who yeah. uh, killed yeah. every, all your family. Sorry about that. It wasn't me. I left as soon as I had a chance. I'm really sorry. But she you got to wa- wonder if they brought her in just to like appease all the petitions to bring Young Justice back. Oh, it could be. Possibly. I, I love I love the storyline between her and, 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 and John. John. Yeah, John. I, although really they made it almost like a romance angle, and I always thought that, that he creepy. played like yeah. a father figure to her. Yeah. So it, it was different. I Can we talk about the actress that played Lena Luthor? You don't like Lena Luthor? I, I was a big fan of the show Marlon, I, and she played Morgana Le Fay on there. And the only great thing actress that, there, here, good. Did you? Wait, the only thing that hurts me is they're clearly doing the exact same thing with her character here that they did on Merlin, where they make you start to really like her, and they keep going, "Oh, you know, you can't trust her," and then it turns out, no, she was doing the right thing all along, and then suddenly she goes, it's "You know what? Same, I'm going to be a, evil." It's the same thing they kept doing on with Lex on Smallville. Yeah, yeah. yeah. she is. She, she isn't. isn't. She is. Although she is. I had, I got a, she is. I got a royal yeah. headache with her accent cutting in and out. Is, is she from Scotland or Ireland? I don't know. But you know what? You can never watch a Liam Neeson film without him doing a Scottish accent again, then, if you say that, because nobody can't hold another accent worse than Liam well, Neeson. <laughs> I don't know. I, it's just all of her scenes. She'll pull off the American accent for about two minutes, and then all of a sudden, I, yeah. it starts the long, creeping The longer like, the scene whoa, 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 whoa. goes, the, the better the chance she'll blow it. <laughs> she's Surprisingly, despite the fact she's instrumental in a lot of big plot things, she's not 
actually on the show as much this season as she was last season. There's l- yeah. less of the sort of bonding between her and Kara's stuff because they already kind of established it. So it's like, okay, that's out of the way. Uh, we do get to see Cyborg Superman, who is the proper... Uh, what's his name? Hank, Hank, Hank Henshaw, Hank Henshaw the real Hank Henshaw show, shows returns. up as another major villain. He uh, he was another one that didn't really do it for me. And even the actor that played him uh, was it James Harewood. He he said he didn't really enjoy playing him because he wasn't given much of anything. He he was like mustache twirling yeah. villain with zero depth. That's true. And he actually knows the comics. And he was like, this is he's essentially what would have happened had Reed Richards killed the rest of his crew. And gone nuts. They're like, it was cheap to get you, dude. You're already here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the, we'll get you. We'll get you a Terminator ma- half mask. And I would have been yeah. excited to play it regardless of depth. Yeah. with the Terminator half mask thing. That's true. Um, That's true. And then Roulette, who I'm blanking on the actress name. She was on Battlestar. She Galactica, was on uh, right? Agents of Shield too. She was on Agents of Shield. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Sky's mother uh, running a, a what I thought was a pretty fun double parter with the, the whole Fight Club, the illegal alien Fight Club thing. Yeah. They also managed a way to work. Justice League animated into that too with uh, with uh, Draga. He was right. also on, Draga being the big yeah. bad yeah. inside of that play. The big, the hard, the the one to beat, as yeah. it were. <laughs> the Tyler Durden. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and then it all leads up eventually to uh, Monel's parents, played by uh, that Terry Hatcher, who played Lois on Lois and Clark, and uh, his what's his name, racist douchebag from Hercules, oh, who played Kevin Hercules. Sorbo. Kevin Sorbo. Sorbo. God, that guy's kind of a piece of shit. I was irritated to see him, but he's such a charming actor. I'm always like, stop making me want to like you, you dick. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there they come in like, you've got to come back. And then it turns into a big, Earth is being invaded by aliens again. Yeah, that was my only issue. It it kind of reeked of the flash. Like, let's use this plot point, uh, the same plot point we used last season. This season, hopefully no evil relatives that decide to come to Earth and humans are nothing but weak cockroaches. Let's invade. I, I like that it all built up into a pretty solid final episode. It, so yeah, I love it that, did. though, it where did. it's like, I mean, her killing her husband, where I'm like, whoa, I didn't see that. that I didn't. Oh, yeah, I did not see that uh, coming. And at all. then a really cool Superman versus Supergirl fight, which once again, and I didn't know this, but and I've had a couple people argue and a couple people confirm. So I think it just depends on which version of the characters you read. But they said technically Supergirl is a little bit stronger than Superman. She is. And the comics. They've, they've, and, well, they've said that in. Uh, in uh, when Jeff Lowe brought too, her back, okay, that yeah. because she's younger, she absorbs solar energy faster than he does. And the thing is, so, I never understood that since Clark was here longer, right? You think you would have thought he would have absorbed more? Think about it. Think about it as like a rechargeable battery. The more times you recharge yeah. it, the longer it takes to recharge. So yeah. it was kind of cool. Her kicking his ass, and he's like, "Hey, you've always been stronger than me." Yeah. I was like, "That gave me a little thrill." And I was like, oh cool. my gosh, can we talk about Superman? Can we talk about how awesome? Oh, he's Tyler Hecklin. Put this guy is yeah. Superman. I think we were all like, I'm just after Henry Cavill. I'm like, I don't even want to see any fucking Superman stuff. And, 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 and no, no fault to of Ca- Cavill. To Cavill, no, it's no. the material the way, he's given. The way he's chosen to, they've chosen to. Suit is terrible, him. though. Yeah. yeah, but this guy is is that. That one we all love. He is the animated Superman. As Clark, he is the, the and classic. Uh, uh, because he's Reeves the beacon Superman. of hope. Yeah. He, is, he is the true version yeah. of what that character is supposed to be, unlike how Cavill's yeah. playing. And fact. similar to how uh, Brandon Roth played him in Superman Returns, I was okay with, you can do innocent farm boy Clark without going over the top. I love the Christopher Reeve films. But I think they played it a little too heavy-handed with the goofiness of Clark. You can play him as the innocent, naive farm boy, and and still make him as every bit Clark. And can. that's and to me, that's that's where Smallville fits in. They yeah. they finally found their balance with that. Yeah. And but with the way they're playing with with Tyler as, as Superman on Supergirl, that was note perfect. Yeah, I, I just agree. hate the suit. And I. <laughs> Thought this all once again. You have the white, the other good white Martians show up and get in the fight, which is like, oh, cool! They've got an army of good white Martians down here now. And Cat uh, shows up again, who I really did honestly miss this season. Oh, I, what, I had a feeling when they were when they moved to CW, meaning they were moving filming to uh, Vancouver, yeah, which means budget is getting trimmed. I had a feeling that she was not going to be in every episode, or if not, just outright gone. Well, now they've announced she's full time on next season again. Oh, so. wow. 
Oh. Which I'm glad because I was not crazy about Snapper Carr's whole run, which I get why it was good for the evolution of the Kara side rather than the Supergirl side. I want more of, of the like, president. She needed a challenge. But yeah, Linda Carter <laughs> as an as an alien, the same race as Chameleon Boy from Legion of Superheroes. Yes, exactly. Um, uh, who is pretending to be the president, uh, who is the president, but is pretending to be It was the such a Men in Black type moment. <laughs> it yeah. really was. And there's a lot of Men in Black type element, and Supergirl makes it work perfectly because she's she's the link between those and it two. that men in black type element makes it stand apart from superman's story so much agreed agreed and the girl power element can i yeah. sp- speak on that oh, maggie and alex well no maggie and alex I, what i mean is season one i have an issue sometimes with when male writers try to write girl power type moments and and they come off really on the nose and heavy handed. Mm. Notice a movie like Wonder Woman does not feel heavy handed. Mm-hmm. They don't need to tell you it's girl power. It just is. Mm-hmm. Supergirl season one was a lot of telling us about what girl power means. Supergirl season two just showed us what it was. That's a valid point. Uh, I always... and they brought the most. They brought the 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 biggest male. I mean character to bounce her off of just to prove that they didn't need to show yeah, it. That he doesn't I mean, they have showed it to be tell there. It, yeah. You know? No, he didn't have to be there. Yeah, he's, it, you're, you're, when he's there, you're like, I love him. But honestly, I'm really glad this is Supergirl's show. That's how you feel agreed. about it, watching it. Um, yeah, I thought it was terrific. I was, you've heard that story, right? Where the, the parents were like, we were having trouble connecting with our adoptive daughter. And then we all started watching Supergirl, Supergirl. together. Yeah. And it, we, we were t- we'd talk about it and it brought us together. Like that whole story. That I was awesome. like, man, I all teared up first time and, I saw that. And that's why I do appreciate shows like The Flash when it's actually firing on all cylinders yeah, and well. Supergirl. They, a lot of the superhero TV shows are not really kid friendly no. but these arrow two, is not a kid friendly show. arrow it never not. well it never purported and to be legends so i'm okay with that kind of back and forth legends it's, yeah it's, depending it's, on the episode it's ribald humor <laughs> yeah. to say the least yeah. uh this is definitely this and the flash are much more kid friendly than than those two are i was very kind of the guardian with with Jim, james Jimmy Olsen becoming the guardian it's just i'm still getting used to james like i have had no problem with the race change my issue yeah. is that he looks like an underwear model he does and he's so too cool for school they should like, have gotten urkel i say they should have got <laughs> donald glover Donald Glover would have been perfect. As too old, probably. But you know. I mean, this guy's probably like thirty-two. I don't know. Yeah, but, you know. and I've never been a fan. Even on True Blood, he just kinds of come. He comes off as a little bland to He's me. He's fine. It's just the whole Guardian thing felt like a desperation of trying to figure out something. That something to do, do for him. I thought at first he was trying to be Diggle. Well, the yeah, thing is, right? the, exactly. the writers decided to switch the two of them out. It's got and the nope. same outfit, yeah. pretty much. It's like, oh, it's Tuesday. I need the Spartan Didn't outfit. Didn't the writers <laughs> say somewhere that they <laughs> saw another Olicity coming on and they they had to really scramble to break up the Kara Jimmy thing yeah. and had to come up with something? Wait a minute, wait a minute. David, are you saying all black armored superheroes look alike? No, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> No, it, it's it's not oh, a race just thing. It's not a race it. thing. It's Tony. Hard, I know. I know. I'm Tony. Oh, I'm sorry. What? <laughs> Rody from the oh, first yeah. Iron Man. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. That's quite all. <laughs> Two insider. <laughs> no, I did really like the whole Alex discovering she's gay and hooking up with Maggie. Yeah, I liked that run. I thought it was really sweet and it was handled well. I was okay with it. Once again, like Jimmy Olsen, the actress they got, I'm okay with her not having the look. But she really didn't have the attitude of Maggie Sawyer that I... Like, mm-hmm. Maggie Sawyer walks in, commands the room. Yeah. Like, like oh, it's like Captain America. Like, when she walks in, shit's going down. Yep. And I did not feel that from this actress at all. Uh, her, I, and, and her having her without having uh, Turpin behind or alongside her weakens her to me as a well, character. I, the I don't know. I like Turpin. Because they bicker back and I'm not, forth I'm not so as well, familiar with those characters, so I'm just well, as as They were um, partners and, uh, for the Superman, Superman comics for a long time. Well, that's what I'm saying. I only know her from the show, and on the this, show I like her a lot. They've been apart long enough for me to enjoy one or the other without them being kind of tied to the hip. I just They're kind of like the Gordon and Bullock. Okay. Of, Gotham, of right. how they are in Gotham, correct. Yeah, yeah I could see that. I, I don't know. I just... They felt they were pretty much... She's like, we don't want to use Renee Montoya yet, but you're for now, you're pretty much Renee Montoya. I, I, yeah, I yeah. can see that. Like, it, it's that Although, um, aren't they bringing in Kate Kane next season? Batwoman? Bat Are they? 
I wouldn't Which, be surprised. I would think that would be a rights thing. And well, yeah, I but thought they brought that, in Superman. They brought, so, once yeah. Superman came in, that kind of like I think Batman's a different animal. Though I think That's, all rules that are and Nightwing is in on um, Titan. Titan. So I think those yeah, rules are now dead, dead and buried. Yeah, I suspect everything. They're they're saying, they, if they could have him at, never mention the fact that. He worked with Batman and Gotham. What they couldn't even say Gotham on the shows. They've mentioned Gotham three times on Supergirl. I think. So. They, I think what they've realized is the shows are helping the comic books at this point yes, more than the, the movies, movies are, and they're kind of like, you know what, fuck it. There's no legal reason we can't do in both. We were just always paranoid about the fans getting confused. They're not going to get confused. They'll be fine. Once Flash movies. started bringing in Earth One, Earth Two, Earth Whatever. You could just say Gotham's on a different Earth. You can just say... Well, they've mentioned Gotham. I, Zombie's on a different Earth. First, uh, actually, <laughs> the is. first episode of Supergirl this season, the the father and the son, and it sees Superman and Supergirl fly by, and he's like, that's it. We're going back to Gotham. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, At I, least our heroes only swing. <laughs> and uh, also, should we talk about the four-parter? Yeah, we will. I just want to talk oh. about the end blue uh, Blu-ray effects here. Uh, you got the Comic-Con panel again. You got a special about the alien fight night. I uh, think about this, but all the alien design, which you see a lot more aliens in this season than you did before. Yeah. Um, that most of them die horribly from a virus at one point. Uh, uh, the the budget I thought was going to be hindered this year, being on CW. It did. It wasn't hindered no. that much. Only times you saw it is when like a lot of flying around the city and stuff. Yeah. It looked like the same city streets that Arrow we, filmed its fight on, and that. Flash film that's fight on. True. So Can we backtrack a little bit and talk about Livewire? Oh, yeah. Who is kind of... What is it? Isn't it, like, not really Livewire? I forget. It, no, right. they... It's It was pretty much the exact character that they ripped from the animated series. No, no, no. I mean, like, because they've had Livewire in season one. She was on season the one. the character here, I thought they thought it was Livewire and then it wasn't or something like that. As I can't far remember. As I know it was the same person. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't remember. I, it's one of those ones. I kind of remember that episode. It was a standalone one. I think they used Caitlyn's wig this season. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that wig is making the round. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> I heard budget it, man. Budget. The extras on the Frost. They said originally she was for for Killer Frost. She was going to have like a pixie wig, and it just kept getting longer and longer and longer oh. until it ended up being what it was. But anyway, uh, yeah, there's another conversation with Andrew Kreisberg and Kevin Smith. There's a audio commentary featuring the two of those uh, for the Supergirl Lives episode. There's a weird thing. I don't know why they set it up this way. It's called Did You Know? Where it's like during interviews with the actors, they gave little bits of trivia about what happened on the show or little things. And for some reason, rather than just have them in one piece, they're like a ton of t- tiny little, this is 40 seconds that you have to wait for it to stop and then click on the next one and wait for it to start. You're like, why isn't this just in one EPK? Kind of irritating. Um, so yeah, You've done it like a pop up video kind of thing in the yeah. In the that would have been fun to do it like that. Man, they don't do the pop up video anymore. I always thought that was fun and, and as an extra feature. I don't like the ones where they do the whole whoo, yeah. and the thing takes over half the screen yeah. to talk about it. Which is, I just listen to the commentary track if I want that. But I love it when they would have the trivia facts on the screen and a little pop up fact. Or like the X Men one point five uh, DVD and Blu Ray where. You could set yeah, it up to yeah. where when the when the hidden it scene happens. or the gag reel or whatever, it. It, yeah. it'll pause the movie right then, and automatically go to the scene, and then come back after. Sure. All right, so let's talk about the Dominators, the big four part cross. Well, invasion was technically three part cross. Yeah, the Supergirl one was merely a like prologue. The, yeah, it was the very very end of the episode. It was like, oh shit, what's that? And then it was like, okay, well that's all you get. Uh, okay. But but then you had first what was it? Arrow was first, I believe. Oh, no, the Flash. No, Flash Supergirl, first. then Arrow, uh, then no, 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 Flash. Flash, Arrow, then, and then Legends. Then Legends. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. the Flash was the meteor came down, and then it wasn't a meteor; it was a the ship. ship. And, and they started, Barry's like, "Dude, aliens!" Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then it's Ollie's "It's a Wonderful Life." And yeah, they have the thing where they all get abducted at the end of that. I, Team Arrow, and or yeah, they're, actually, in a, they're or, in a whole uh, shared hallucination. Yeah, that everything well, is. There wonderful. was an anim- there was an animated version of the, on uh, the Batman animated series, Per Chance to Dream, with Matt Hatter. Very similar plot. Okay. Very similar. And then there's the Legends one where they all have to they have to go back into the 50s to the first time the Dominators came to the planet. And then it revealed that the, the, the basically their big plan is like, oh, we don't really like metahumans. And we're pretty pissed about Barry Allen changing the timeline. So, uh, And, of course, they defeat them all with the help of a uh, techie we just made this up device. <laughs> like, yeah. oh, yeah, this is a thing we just invented that will stop them. <laughs> but, well, given you have Flash and Supergirl who can move so right. fast, they, the plan and then you put Felicity and uh, Cisco together with yeah. Har- with Harrison. So yeah, 
I mean, I had fun with it. I thought it was a decent enough crossover episode. I thought, like, it, I enjoyed it. I thought it. The, the Legends episode is the best one of the three. Seeing everyone get to yeah. get to kick ass everyone, and costume on screen. Yeah. And Firestorm finally used his freaking powers other than tossing fireballs. That got so old so fast. Yeah. I, He's one of my favorite ca- comic book characters. I understand why they don't want to use his powers because, honestly, he should... There should be nothing that should be able to defeat him. Yeah, he's the nuclear man. Yeah, and I know they don't want him to become big Deus Ex Machina, but... Yeah. A Michael Sue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well played, well played. But he's just human torch light, and it gets old after a while. Yeah, I tend to agree. Um, Wait, are you, are, you, are you talking Chris Evans human torch? Or are you talking- <laughs> <laughs> don't start. Did you- <laughs> We're not discussing either one of those things that never happened. Uh, we won't speak. speak about the FF film again until we get our reboot with Brad Bird directing, please God. Oh, God, we all want to see that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, ultimately, I thought that, that that was a fun crossover. I hope they do something that definitely includes more thoroughly all four shows. But it was really fun watching Supergirl being mind-controlled and fighting the Flash. It was like, yeah, I think we all wanted to see that. Right? Also got explained why Supergirl wasn't a big part of it. A lot of the, the production set pieces were still in transit between yeah. the two between Los Angeles and moving to, to Vancouver, Vancouver. So yeah. they really couldn't do much. Although Supergirl was in like two of those a lot. She was in the Flash yeah. one a lot and she was in the yeah. Legends one a lot. A which lot. is great because honestly like whereas I uh, overall She had a pretty decent part in uh, in the Arrow. The Arrow one, one I think they tried Arrow. to keep the super powered character because yeah. Arrow's the one show if you don't watch the other shows it's you're grounded. not used to yeah. a bunch of super powered characters like a on Nolan screen. kind of thing where it's pretty grounded. Yeah, it's yeah. always startling when there is a meta character in there. You're yeah. like, Whoa shit. Boy, this guy has actual powers. Fuck. Which was I thought one of the problems with season four. Damien Dark as a meta human kind of fucked up the whole video. yeah I, I i can see i can see i they were going for something different i i i don't want to try to push boundaries see how far they could go yeah, with okay. it. yeah i mean who else who else could they possibly bring in at and, least or, the shock and awe is not as like the marvel netflix shows where we had an alien invasion a european country wiped out a Hulk on a rampage in Harlem, and they're still, like, questioning super-powered stuff. I know, right? Oh, I don't know. That sounds weird. Super-powered, that sounds silly. It's like, are you fucking living on the same planet I am? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe when Thanos yeah. comes and erases half of you fucks, I mean, you'll finally guy with get the message. Fish. No, he's too far-fetched. <laughs> At this yeah, point in Marvel Comics, that. in the Marvel Comics universe, it's weirder to not have superpowers than it is, too. I mean, Pretty like, one much. thing before where it was like, it could be any radioactivity, whatever, or mutant, and now they're like, oh, the Terrigen myths inhumans. are turning everybody left into an yeah. inhuman. So. Although they're undoing that now. They're like, okay, yeah. fans are kind of seeing through this... this Behind the scenes, corporate. I think move. It'll, they'll step back real fast when everyone sees the Inhumans TV show and go, "Wow, this sucks." <laughs> I want it to get. I it's just more and more. It's everything's not looking they, it's good. Scott Buck who ran Iron Fist. It's gonna and suck. De- and ran Dexter into the ground. Let's yeah. not forget. Yeah, he's the guy who destroyed Dexter. So first four seasons, probably if it ended at the end of season four, possibly the greatest this TV is, show honestly, of all time. Humans yeah. is the first Marvel series I have zero interest in. Yeah, even zero. Just, even before I knew Scott Buck was involved, seeing the pictures of them, I was like, "This is so cheap." Look, and you got to you deal with like bad cosplay. Well, also, I, I typically forgive stills early on because most stills of superhero films are not good. Thor, the the first Thor film. With Hopkins, Hilson, yeah. and Hemsworth together, it did not look good. But in motion, in, a, in a trailer, it looked fine. But, gosh, and you have the bad costumes on top of ABC's historically flat photography. Like, can't we just put Lockjaw on another better show? Because I want to see yes. Lockjaw. Yes. I just don't care about the rest of them. Have him pop Can up. Lockjaw on the pet the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. <laughs> Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. got so good this past That's season. It. Let him pop up on the arcade. I love this season of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I, I thought that, like, it was kind of, it's kind of tied with Legends and Supergirl for my favorite of the this year's Supergirl. I, I was so done with, uh, I got sick of the them beating us over no, the head I'm with not, the Inhuman Agenda seasons two and three, but yeah. season and four was phenomenal. This was the show I've been wanting all this time. Legion is the winner for all oh, of the course, shows, of course. but it's so far above every other one that I wasn't even counting it. Well, the, <laughs> I, I don't know. Not for you, David. I, I'll be honest. I, I heard so much stuff, bad stuff about Legion before it premiered that I never watched it. Wow, really? And uh, even after every everything flipped, no, Legion was the first episode was kind of, eh, but 
After that, it's awesome. I'm like, nope, sorry. Out. I was sold from episode back. one, it's, minute one. <laughs> Legion one is Legion is not only the best superhero show. On it's TV, so different. It's than a anything. kind of a game changer for television. It is in general. Wow. Noah I've Hawley can seen, do no wrong. I've never seen anything like it. It stands alone. And Highly I'm, highest recommendation. And because of that, I'm excited for the next X Men series about to start. The Gifted. Yeah, the Gifted. And Matt Nix, Burn Notice. Uh, what the good guys? The TV series? Yeah, I think so, yeah. That Matt Nix can do no wrong. I trust him with this series. I'm not as crazy about those shows as you are, but I didn't dislike them either. You know? I was like, it's yeah, they're all right. But the, it's a great storyline. It's it's fine. It's the right type of show plot for an X-Men, like another X-Men spinoff show. And it's not directly tied to the films, but they use char- They purposely stepped around certain aspects of it to make it to where if they wanted to tie it into the films... Or if they wanted to bring yeah. an actor or two from the well, film, I love that John in. Proud stars in it. So I'm excited. Oh, I love that, that dude. So. If they wanted to finally give Cyclops some balls and have James Marsden come into the show and give him the respect he deserves as one of the most underrated actors in Hollywood, they're still being wishy washy about whether or not Legion and and uh, the Gifted are tied into the movie universe. They said Legion is definitely not given. They they won't give the official time period. Well, they never said it definitely isn't. They keep saying, well, we haven't decided yet. Yeah. Because you watch Legion, it could be connected, but it just doesn't have the same... To me, the the whole X-Men movie universe is so canon screwed that I... I just I, I'm to the point like where you're saying with where you said with Gotham where you just kinda okay, it's its own thing yeah. and time means nothing and I mean, this character can be with this character in this time period yeah. and so That's on and so forth. It's always been in, in the X Men comics as well though. So but they changed the The comics it, it is I don't think the comics were as bad as from first class to Days of Future Past and from Days of Future Past yeah. to a pop- I think they should not have done the 10 year jumps between movies I mean let's face Days of Future Past was there to go sorry we really fucked up with the with uh, Wolverine X-Men Origin and, and X-Men yeah. 3 and but let's erase gonna, those let's just fix it using as a plot device one of the most yeah. popular X-Men stories of all time and I thought it did a great job and I liked it it did I don't think they needed to jump ahead 10 years after first class hmm. it really the 10 year jumps are what is really making the continuity gaps stand out big time. They could have just said two years after the events of First Class. I do. In some ways, I kind of more want them to get all these TV shows right in the X-Men universe than I even care about the movies. That's true. I'm just like, get the, get the fucking... Like, I'm I mean, shocked. Obviously, Legion... Or, I'm sorry, Logan was great. Uh, you oh, know. Deadpool was amazing. Yeah, Deadpool was amazing, totally. Can't wait for the next one of that. Um, I especially because the director, one of the directors of John Wick... John is Wick, it. yeah. Like, <laughs> Has Fox finally got his shit together? I, I doubt it. But they got lucky for a while. Well, Deadpool... You know, they, Deadpool was like, we don't care about this little thing. And that's why that turned out good. Yeah. Logan... And no one was giving notes. Jackman had to basically forego... Didn't he take a huge pay cut just to yes. make sure the R rating happened? Yep. Yeah. And, it, and it, that was the second time that he offered that. Yep. Yeah. yeah, and it was worth it. Because he, he wanted to leave that character on the strongest note possible. And that's exactly what he did. Although yeah, I still did. insist they're going to talk him back at some point when they go, Look, in the comics, you're like 60. Well, he's already <laughs> stated that the only thing that will get him to come back is if Mar- Fox cuts a deal with Marvel Studios. Yeah. X-Men and Avengers and on screen happen. at the same time. If that hasn't already happened, which I strongly suspect there's been some behind-the-scenes Look, I, I, and this I, I keep saying... You know, there's this little thing called the reality jam that's exactly. going to be a pertinent part of the storyline. Well, very honestly, shortly. the and whole nobody's issue... saying that he has to be in costume. Yeah, he doesn't. And look, the X Men, Fox owned the film rights. They did not own the TV rights. Marvel Studios had has to sign off on any TV show Fox wants to do. Yeah, they're, they're and they would not have agreed to this. They had to have gotten something in return. They're co-producing the show. Exactly. Uh, this and, uh, I'm sorry, Legion and the Gifted with Fox. So exactly. it's like, well, that's interesting. But the thing is, um, I th- didn't they say all, as far as distribution, everything is going to Fox? What did Marvel get out of this? Yeah. They got to keep the toy revenue money. The, some, yeah. people yeah. Said, st- some people said it was that. Some people said... Maybe they got Fantastic Four back. We would have heard something yeah, but, by now. And Kevin Feige keeps saying we're just not interested in getting the Fantastic Four back. The brand is pretty burnt right now. We just he says that now, but five years from now, yeah. I want. I don't want now. I, now once Infinity War is done, I want Secret War. Yeah, 
Well, the what, first one, the good one. Yeah, but they're, they're going to end up doing Secret Invasion next, yeah, for sure. It, honestly, because with they saying Miss Marvel, the scrolls, gonna be the scrolls bad guys, yeah. and it takes place in the nineties. I'm like, yeah. I, I read is one the next article a on. few months back. Um, what if it was for like some lesser characters that we don't expect to be big in the Marvel universe? What if it's Kang the Conqueror? Fox owns the rights to the Avengers' top villain. What, I, he appeared first in Fantastic Four as Ramatut, which makes no sense because the Inhumans first appeared in Fantastic Four. It's yet arguable Marvel's, whether or not he's the Avengers' yeah. top villain. I, he's by one far, of them. by far, I, I love Ultron as a character. Ultron's number two. He will always Kang by far is number one. My like time and time again, the Kang. Dude, the Kang Dynasty should have solidified you, you that. You call him the Kangster when you're in private, don't you? <laughs> Dude. You're like, the Kanginator. The All right, Kangster. I'm just going to comment on the Kangaroo. The Kangaroo. <laughs> the Kang Dynasty. He nuked Washington, D.C., took over the planet, locked up every superhero on the planet in internment camps, forced the U.S. President, United uh, Nations Secretary General, and Avengers Chairperson to sign Articles of Surrender. Zartan did that in two hours. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he locked up every super here. Is that G.I. Joe? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I honestly think all, as all the stuff Ultron's done, he ain't did that. I don't know. I mean, Thanos is an Avengers. Well, that he, dude destroyed I don't the count, entire universe. I don't count. Thanos is like so far. But that's why I don't count Darkseid as Justice League villain. He's so far above what we consider is. But they're just, always the ones who end up fighting him. In the modern era, yeah. yeah. In the modern era, same. Yeah, it used to be the, like the new gods. But, yeah, yeah, and same thing with the Avengers. Facing off against Thanos every two, three years. That's a last decade thing. That was not the case for the prior 40. He's writing Thanos' book right now. Uh, Donnie Cates, who writes uh, Redneck and God Country, he's actually writing the new Thanos. He's he's anxious. Friends with him on Facebook, and there's a, from uh, a book I I love, the infamous Iron Man. Uh, Man, I fucking love it so much. Is it with Dr. Doom as Iron Man? It's such a great book. But there's an image of Dr. Strange in there, comes down, and he's like, oh my god, Marvel put me inside their universe, because he looks exactly, he's drawn exactly like Donnie Cates. I was like, okay, that's, I wonder if that's an intentional joke from the artist or something. (laughs) <laughs> anyway, all yeah. right, so we've like gone on and on way past the point we were supposed to, but that's fine. This was fun. Oh, also, Hellfire is another show that should be coming up soon. Oh, so From that is still in production. I, I, I thought the that they froze. Show is, yeah, well, it was originally going to be second, and then they moved it back to third. This one was supposed to actually be tied to the movies. It was supposed yeah. to take place like, what, a year or two after first class? I still something? might, so we don't know. But we will wait and see. And, uh, yeah, that's it, though, for the, the four DC television <laughs> shows. And many, many other shows. <laughs> My thanks to both Gene and David. David, can you tell me where you'd like them to find you online? Uh, well, you can uh, you can find me on Facebook. I also have a, my own uh YouTube channel, uh, but that's mainly mainly for my musical endeavors. What's that uh, called? David Scott King. It's just okay. on YouTube. Um, I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. Under David Scott King. David Scott King. Yeah. There you go. And then, of course, Gene, you can find uh, sporadically here on the site, <laughs> Thumbtacks and Screwjobs. <laughs> Thumbtacks and Screwjobs, which our SummerSlam episode, if Richard is back in town and we can get this recorded this week, will be on there. Also at Smart Country, uh, at Twitter, uh, on Twitter at Gene Selassie, and I also write for the Scrum Sports. And Chris... Oh, they already know I own the site. They know exactly where I am. They're you, you can plug where, whatever you want, They're buddy. already where I am. Ah, <laughs> they're okay. listening to this. They're one of us. Here. They're one of us. Oneofus.net has been your one-stop shop for all things geek for years. But there's a side to them many of you have never heard. The subscription side. Subscribe and listen to great podcasts like The Breakfast Pub, the original gentleman and the watch a movie with us series head on over to oneofus.net and don't forget your towel